Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. It should be the last one. It's Thursday, December 13th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com on YouTube, Darko 2012, 2013. All right, so I'm gonna cover eugenics in this one. The first one we covered, um, uh, basically kind of more conspiracy tough stuff, but not that it's not real, just something different and then uh, like politics and that. A second one, we went through uh, surveillance and uh, some police state. And this third one, we'll do eugenic social engineering. Americans living longer, but also living sicker. Uh, I don't, I still don't agree with the living longer. I think there may be some older people um, from older generations that may live longer. But uh, like I said, I think our generation's kind of screwed overall. We'll see, like I said, by 2050, we'll see what the average age is. It says report finds we're increasingly living with chronic illnesses. So there's no way that this country can possibly afford the medical care costs and consequences of these preventable chronic illnesses. The good news, a new report shows that Americans are living longer. It goes on and it says that there are fewer heart diseases and cancer deaths. There are more people living with obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure thanks to the wonders of modern medicine. Isn't that great, guys? That's progress. See, we have to look back and say progress. So it says they're living longer, sicker. More than 26% of Americans are sedentary, meaning that they have, haven't engaged in any physical activity other than work for a month, and almost 28% of adults are obese, while nearly 31% have high blood pressure. It says the healthiest state for the sixth year is Vermont. Of course, this is the medical industry um, that keeps you alive just so they can suck all the life out of you, the energy, which is you have to go to work to pay for all of this eugenics that's uh, being carried out on you. You know, a lot of people that should have died. See, this is the irony is that back in the day, uh, you know, you had people living in their hundreds. It was definitely not uh, uncommon for people to live in their 90s and hundreds. Um, but, you know, usually if you made it past the first um, year, you were all right, um, you know, due to, you know, high mort infant mortality rate. But for the most part, people would live long and uh, they get by. Uh, now everybody thinks this is progress because you can go and take on um, hundreds of thousands uh, of, of dollars of worth of debt um, when you should have been dead. So when you take you and you cart your ass off to the emergency room, they're going to suck everything they can from you. Oh, yeah, we should do a test. You should come in here. You should take these pharmaceuticals, right, when you should have just died. And then they complain about uh, medical costs, and then they try to force people to have private insurance. You know, the best thing is a healthy lifestyle, which is makes sense that people have all these obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and they're just uh, plot behind the TV and they don't go for a walk or, or anything. So again, personal responsibility, and they want other people to pay for their lack of that. Insecticide use on planes. It says a reader reported that during a flight from L.A. to Sydney, the cabin crew sprayed insecticide through the cabin. It says while this was a genuine what the F moment for me, I asked my wife about it who's flown much more. She says she's experienced it on a flight from Australia to New Zealand. She says it won't be uh, news for many of you, but the practice has been around for many years, maybe whatever decades. It's news to me too, I didn't know that. But then again, I haven't flown since 2005, and I'm glad because I'm not going through those body scanners and getting groped. So flight attendants call for an end of onboard insecticides from 2004. It was on a flight um, a flight attendant 39 years says much of that time uh, was from LA to Australia says UN said sometimes the pesticides was applied so thickly that you can see it dripping down the wall covering uh, instrument paddles coating the galley where food was prepared she remembers the days when she emptied uh, two cans of phenethrin per flight above the heads of passengers through the label on the can said not to inhale even back in 2001 uh, crews were revolting against this jet spraying. Speaking of jet spraying, let's not forget the, the aerosols and uh, that are being sprayed and mixed in the jet fuel and sprayed overhead. And it's a sad state of affairs. I just got this link from a GGN listener recently. I never saw it before. But uh, this is this is it right here. Uh, you can somewhat uh, try to predict what the weather is going to be by the spraying, and they actually give a little forecast. And uh, luckily, we've been able to get some sun lately. Um, not too many chemicals, but they have. They were spraying today. They were really seriously. Uh, they had six planes over one area today. But the thing that gets me about this is that it's just a really a sad state of affairs. Um, 
when something so blatantly obvious exists, a problem, an attack, an assault on your health as a as a as a as an individual, as a human being, whatever, um, they're sitting there telling you that uh, we're living longer, but we're uh, but we're sicker. But they're not going to include one of the biggest indicators, or uh, probably um, reasons for this, which is the aerosol spraying. So to me, I just find this very sad that there's a website that tracks this chemical forecast based off the global, or just really just national spraying. Um, it goes on global, but just for national, that um, that it could be happening right out there in the open, and uh, you could have a website about it even, and yet you ask 9 out of 10 people about it, and they won't know anything about it, and if you try to explain that to them and tell them to look up, um, they'll just basically shut down. So let's see some uh, more ways uh, that can make people sick. A uh, flame retardant chemical lurks in soda and sports drinks. It says that brominated vegetable oils in 10% of the drinks America buys. So I don't know why you would drink this crap. But if you do, it says brominated vegetable oil, long used drink additive tucked into the ingredients list of the 10% of the drinks sold in America finds itself um, in a fresh debate. It's in Mountain Dew, Gatorade, and other citrus drinks. Goes on or says, but it's been banned in the EU and Japan. And a 15 year old girl from Mississippi has started a petition to stop using well why just get the knowledge and don't drink it anymore and put them out of business i mean we're talking about pepsi company this this isn't a family company you go look at the list of all the companies that they that they've bought out they're huge i mean they're they're making decisions on on global politics and, and decisions they're at the bilderberg groups and meetings and i mean they have a lot of pull and it's not just an innocent pop company the ingredients is com compromise of bromine, which is found in flame retardants, which are used to keep couches from catching on fire. goes here, and it says that the possible side effects include possible. They probably know what it is before they even released it. Neurological disorders and altered thyroid hormones. Daily soft drinks surfing uh, boost aggressive prostate cancer by 40%. Nearly one quarter of a million men will be diagnosed with some stage of prostate cancer says here, many suffer unnecessarily uh, the consequences of invasive treatment techniques uh, that cut, irradiate, and poison tumor cells in an effort to control the illness. A University of London, Sweden study determined that men who drink one normal size soft drink per day are at a greater risk of getting more aggressive forms of prostate cancer. Most popular weight loss drug strongly alters other drug therapies. University of Rhode Island research discovered that weight loss drug uh, Orlistat, known by brand names as Xenicol and Ali, inhibits a key enzyme that may lead to severe toxicity of internal organs such as a liver, which processes over 200, uh, has, two, has over 200 functions of liver, so you don't want to, you know, you want to try to keep it in shape if you can, it says, and kidneys, again, for detoxing. So it says the inhibition is irreversible and can be caused by low level of the drug. It also limits the effectiveness of some anti-cancer drugs. It says GM genetically modified food health fears complete nonsense. Says Owen Patterson, environment. This is the environment secretary. Says he's probably been placed there by Monsanto or or uh, Conagra. Says he's confident that the prime minister would find an appropriate moment to back genetically modified food. Again, another reason why it's you know people are more sick. Remember what I was talking about, uh, this was back in the 60s, the genetically modified wheat here in the U.S. I'm not sure where else it is, but one of the things that it did was it actually uh, made people more hungry as they ate it. It also sterilizes people, which, again, says, you know, why is there more ob obesity and why are people, why are the fertility rates dropping, plummeting, really, according to a recent France study. And, again, the French did a study on this genetically modified food and found that these little um, mice and that were getting huge tumors uh, caused by this. Emphatically, we should be looking at genetically modified foods. I'm very clear it would be a good thing, he told the Telegraph. The trouble is all this stuff about Frankenstein foods and putting poisons in the foods. There are real benefits. <laughs> yeah, like killing people and making them sterile. And what you've got to do is sell the real environmental benefits, which is... If you die off, you help the environment. You help uh, dirt bags, dirt bag douchebags like him uh, keep his coffers full and stuff. Tiny Bhutan to move to 100% organic farming methods. The most farmers already organically. So uh, what's interesting is that Bhutan was on the, on the top of the national happiness, gross national happiness. So 
uh, for whatever it's worth, they say because they actually don't have a lot of money, but they're happy. Well, they have organic food. That could be one of the reasons, I think. It says Mexico hit by diabetes epidemic as processed American foods take over. Remember I was talking about how Mexico, they, you know, there's some things that they have, their, uh, their meats and, their, and even their soda doesn't have, um, has real sugar, and their meats are a little bit better, and their food is a little bit better. But unfortunately, it goes on here, and it says that when Mexico signed on to become a participant in the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, in the early 90s, country's leaders thought they would be getting unprecedented access to the vast U.S. marketplace. So America has been successful at exporting its fast food industry, and with all of it, all of its health problems and causes. Another reason, like chemtrails, right, that doesn't exist. How about fracking? Review of... A fracking study finds failure to disclose conflict of interest. This controversial study about fracking or hydraulic fracturing released today finds numerous errors and flaws with how the study was conducted and released. And that's uh, that's getting into the water table. It's poisoning the animals, the meat and food that you eat, but also the people, their water. And there was a little conflict of interest in a little known study that was done and funded by Alcoa, the Aluminum Company of America, to take um, aluminum byproduct and toxic waste from their manufacturing of aluminum and dump it in your water supply and call it fluoride and it prevents tooth decay so there's a little conflict of interest too and they still have that in the water and that was what 60 years now later so we'll see handheld dental x-ray machines linked to cancer risk emitting 10 times the radiation of normal x-rays once again the penny pinching bureaucrats running great britain's national health service if you want to call that Notable for a euthanasia, euthanasia program that kills 130,000 people a year may be responsible for creating yet another unhealthy environment for British subjects, you know, test subjects, right? Chaos as winter vomiting cases hit 750,000 and forced hundreds of wards to close. Like I said, they were doing some nasty chemicals, and they were different. Uh, they were just a lot more worse. I have felt uh, stuff with my throat. It went away. I kicked it with some colloidal silver and oil of oregano, but I've, I've noticed I talked to other people around me, and they're sick again. But it's interesting, 700,000 in gold goes missing from Pfizer Pharmaceutical Lab. And gold dust has come up missing at its Chesterfield, Missouri lab. It has also been found to be useful in medical applications, certain forms of cancer where radiated gold is placed directly onto the tissue. Commentators are saying there's more to this story. They said that um, gold dust and healing and ancient art, that's what it is, only for the few turned into a mega power a powder healing agent has been used since Babylon goes on and says that this could be used for the elitist and probably a, a victim of weaponized cancer Hugo Chavez suffers camp complications from surgery but he's reportedly improved after bleeding it's the first time the Venezuela officials have been uh, publicly talking about how it's not been going so well for the president unfortunately many um, ignorant people go in and there and voted and said that 41 percent said this was hilarious Mother has to go to court after fleeing with seven-year-old son to avoid forced cancer treatment. Apparently, she's now been convinced by authorities to let cancer doctors fry her son's brain should new tests confirm that he needs the procedure to save his life. There's a lot of news about HIV again out of nowhere. A girl close to dying from leukemia is saved by an engineered bioweapon against the African race, HIV. The UN says they call for legalizing prostitution worldwide to reduce the HIV uh, numbers. Scientists created a condom that protects against sexually transmitted disease by dissolving inside the body. That should be really healthy, melting and releasing chemicals. Actually, it was Bill Gates that funded the development of this. New research says that they can prove homosexuality is due to genetics. And just another celebrity out here with a man kissing a man. This Haran, I never, I don't even know who this guy is, gets a kiss from Dustin Hoffman. West Point Chapel hosts its first same-sex marriage, followed by talking about gender neutral Hasbro, the toy maker, to meet girl fighting for less girly Easy Bake. They want a gender neutral Easy Bake oven. A top male chef rallies behind her. Check out this documentary called The Disappearing Male, in which our children, our children's children, are experimental test subjects. Big Pharma Parkinson's drug turns an ordinary man into a gay sex addict. New documentary delves into the secretive world of adult babies. No joke. Now there's another Barbie girl who has transformed their looks thanks to plastic surgery. Here the pair are working together holding lectures on spirituality. The Hunger Games inspired TV show is in the works. So it's called The Selection where girls are chosen to fight it out in a televised battle to marry a prince. In a time where you can't decipher between 
reality and fiction, you open yourselves up for programming. Thank you.